this is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today I have a very exciting episode for you. And this episode I've been waiting for for definitely a long time. When I first heard about this machine that's on the side of me right here, it was actually many years ago and there was not distribution in the USA. Finally, after many years, there is now distribution in the USA for this very juicer. This one's actually called the Juice Presso Juicer. So besides looking really cool like a modern art piece on your kitchen counter as a nice decoration, plus I like the name Juice Presso, it sounds like Expresso, but Juice Presso because it's pressing your juice and juice is one of the healthiest things that you can be drinking, in my opinion, definitely better than an espresso. <laughs> so that being said, the Juice Presso is now available in the good old United States of America and I have really good news. It's probably the lowest price that you're going to find in any country. For a special introductory price at this time, this machine is coming in at under $300. Yes, you heard that right, under $300, which makes it the least expensive single vertical auger style juicer that's being imported from Korea. Now, there are other vertical auger machines coming into the market now that may look like this style machine, but that are made in China. I don't want to caution you guys to watch out for some of the machines made in China. They're basically knockoffs of the machines like this that are made in Korea that were the originators of the vertical single auger design. So I highly encourage you guys to get a machine made in Korea and one of the top tier brands and this is definitely one of them. Another thing about this machine besides its price point is that it is the slowest running juicer on the market. Now is that a good or a bad thing? Well it depends. If you have a lot of time on your hands it could be a good thing. But also if you want the highest quality juice this machine runs at 40 RPMs, that's 4-0. Slowest machine on the market, the nearest competitor runs at like 80 RPMs, which is twice the speed. Which also means because it is running so slow, it will take you a little bit longer time to juice. But it's also going to guarantee you the highest quality nutrition on the market because it's running at such a slow speed, it's not going to have as much oxidation occurring to the juice when you're making it. So without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you the different parts of the machine, how to assemble and disassemble because that is very important. If the machine is not properly assembled, it's not going to turn on for you. So I want to show you guys how to do it properly. And then after that, we're going to show you guys all the different things you can juice in it. So today we're just using a sample of things. We got things like strawberries. We're going to make 100% strawberry juice. Now, I don't need to tell you guys that fruits and vegetables are the best foods on the planet to lose weight and have more energy and to get healthy in my opinion. These are nature's foods, foods that are found in nature that you can now juice and it get nice juice extractions and when you're using a juicer it's extracting the juice from the fiber and it's the juice of the fiber that feeds you and Jay Cordage the juice man or formerly known as the juice man uh, told me that and it's really the juice that makes that breaks down the fibrous cell walls of some of the especially the vegetables and makes it more absorbable for us to take into our bodies. After all, we are nothing more than a juice extractor ourselves. When we eat something, at one side comes the liquids and one side comes the solids and we can only absorb things in a liquid state. So besides juicing just the strawberries, we're going to make 100% strawberry juice, we're going to make 100% apple juice, then we're going to do a mixture, a blend of pineapple orange juice, that's one of my favorite blends. And finally, we're going to see how the Juice Presso juices spinach and carrots to make a nice green juice. So next I want to show you guys how to disassemble and assemble the machine and also explain you how this machine works because it is one unique juicer on the market. So first we're going to go ahead and uh, rotate this top off. But you can see here it says open and close and there's a little arrow on the clear bowl here and it's on close. Now we're going to switch it to open and then we can just lift this up. And this is the feed chute. This is the top of the machine. This is where you're going to feed the produce in the machine to get juice. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. The next part is the heart of the machine. This is literally the single auger. This is the part that actually does it all. What this part does is say when you take a piece of pineapple, the auger comes around and literally cuts off a piece of the produce just like that and cuts it off. And when it cuts it off, it actually sends it down in between the gear and this gear is actually just rotating slowly and as it rotates, the space where the produce is is squeezed smaller and smaller until the juice is pressed out, out of the screen actually. So that's how this machine works. So the juice is then pressed out of the screen through the different holes and this is a two stage juice because on the initial crush some juice will come out this top set of holes and then as the uh, produce gets worked down the auger the space gets compacted and compacted and more juice comes out the bottom. So that's how this screen is and then what we have next is 
the automatic wiping blade. So imagine driving your car in a rainstorm with the, without windshield wipers. You know, with windshield wipers, you can see easily. Without them, I don't know where you'd be, <laughs> maybe in the ditch. But with this, it has an automatic wiping blade. So as you're juicing and juice is coming out this screen, this wiping blade is spinning around to keep the screen clean so that more juice could come out of your screen, which means more yield for you. So that's definitely really cool. The last part is this main juicing bowl and it lifts off quite easily. Uh, no locking tabs like on some other vertical auger juicers like this. And as you can see, it's just right here, pretty basic, all the components sit inside there. The one thing I want to let you guys be aware about is this guy right here. This is actually called a yellow juice flap. So this juice flap uh, comes in and goes out and it's usually out for cleaning. And when you're using the juicer, you want to push it all the way in. So we're going to go ahead and push that in for you guys and show you guys what it looks like. Now, when you're using the juicer to juice, this flap should always be pushed in. And you can see right there, it's in. Now what this flap does, it keeps back pressure on the pulp to keep the pulp inside the machine so that you get the highest extraction and highest yield out of the juice presso. Another unique feature about the juice presso is that the way this bowl is designed, when you put the screen on there, the way it's designed, it does let some pulp out of the bowl into your juice. So this juicer will make a nice full body rich juice with pulp and actually yes, more pulp than other competitor vertical single auger style juicers due to the design that they've made. So if you like a full body ju juice with pulp, this is going to be the juicer for you. If you don't, then you may want to get a juicer that makes less pulp or simply just strain the pulp out after the juicer makes it. So uh, next step is we're going to go ahead and reassemble the machine. Now it's very important to reassemble this machine properly because if you're not reassembling it properly, it will not turn on. You might think, John, you sent me a defective juicer. Well, hey, before you make that claim, you might want to just double check and make sure it's properly assembled. So I want to go through that step by step with you. So the first step is you're going to take your juicing bowl here and that's just basically going to sit on the machine and you could just put it on there and rotate it until it drops into place just like that. It'll seat nice and firmly. The next step is you're going to take the uh, wiping blade and put that on top of the juicing screen. And on the juicing screen, there's a little red dot. You see that red dot there? And that little red dot should be corresponding to a little arrow on the top of the juicing bowl. And we're going to go ahead and line that up. This just locks into place. The next part is the auger. You're going to take that auger and uh, put it right in there and seat it down in there. Once it's nice and seated, you're going to take your top and on your top it says open and close. So you're going to line up the open with that little arrow that you lined up the dot, put that to open and then rotate it to the right to close and you're all ready and set to go. Now if you assemble this and you can turn it on, it'll actually turn on. That means you assembled it correctly and if you maybe just put this on without turning it all the way, you could press on and it's not going to come on. That's because there's a built-in safety mechanism that's not going to allow the machine to turn on unless you assemble it properly. So we're going to go ahead and turn it off and rotate this just a little bit. And now be aware, if you are juicing and this rotates just a little bit off, the machine's going to stop. So you need to always make sure this little arrow here with clothes is lined up with the arrow here. If it's not lined up, then the juicer will not turn on and actually may turn off during juicing if you knock it a little bit and it gets off kilter. So that's how easy it is to assemble. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this bad boy up to juice. So we're going to go ahead and take our uh, juice catch or pulp catch bin. In this case, we're going to use it actually as the pulp catch. We're going to take a nice glass here to catch our delicious juice. And what we're going to juice first is some strawberries. I love strawberries. And if you're going to juice some strawberries, which actually I don't recommend you juice fruit, I recommend always eating your fruit whole or blending them up because then you get the benefits of the fiber. When juicing your fruits, you're going to remove most of the fiber. Now the juice press is going to leave more fiber in than other juicers, but nonetheless, you're going to remove the fiber. And when you remove the fiber from fruits, basically you're taking away the blood sugar regulation mechanism. So what's that mean in easy terms? That means when you drink a juice made out of fruits, it's going to just basically go into like sugar water. Now, yes, this sugar water has a lot of other antioxidants and nutrients and phytochemicals. That's way better than a Coke or a soda or even pasteurizing bottled juices from the store. 
But in my opinion, it's not as good as drinking a nice, good vegetable juice. So one of the things I like about the Juice Presso is that it runs at 40 RPMs. It's quite slow and it has a DC motor, as I had mentioned earlier. And one of the cons of this is that it does tend to be a little bit louder than some of the other AC motors on the market. So we're going to go ahead and turn this on. You'll get to hear it running. And if you're sensitive to noise, then this might need to be the juicer for you because it has a nice, like, repetitive motion that you'll actually hear in the video. So now all we need to do is simply take the strawberries and just drop them in one at a time. And yes, I'm putting in the green stems and all. The green stems are actually just like eating a salad. These are green that you can't eat. And as we're putting the strawberries in, you can see we're making some nice, delicious, rich strawberry juice. Now, this isn't a totally clean, fine juice like drinking water. This is a rich, full body juice, more like a strawberry nectar, but not yet a smoothie because once again, a smoothie, they would take actually the pulp here and then mix it with the juice. So we're juicing here one full pound of strawberries and in my opinion, most fruits actually don't yield a lot of juice for the amount of strawberries or fruits you're buying. So that's one of the reasons why I definitely recommend that you eat or blend your fruits because then you get the entire utilization out of your fruits. As you can see, it's working really good. We got a half a glass of strawberry juice, 100% strawberry juice. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and juice these last few up. You can hear that noise that the juice press was making. Now this is just the standard gear noise of the DC motor. And that's just how it is. And this is working quite well. I'm making a nice, rich, full body juice. And uh, you know, one of the main things when juicing fruits or anything else in the juice presso is that you want to make sure you have nice, fresh produce. If these guys were old or soggy or soft, they're really not going to juice well. So you need to pick out strawberries that are nice, firm, and hard. And this goes with any fruit or vegetable that you're going to be juicing in the juice presso or actually any other juicer for that matter. All right, I think we're down to our last strawberry. So one whole pound of strawberries literally made us one nice tall glass of juice. Now once you are done juicing the last item in the machine, you want to let the machine work for at least another minute or so, or at least 6, 30 seconds, to let it continue to juice. Because as you can see, even though we dropped that last strawberry in there, juice is continuing to pour out of the spout there. And you know, it may take about a minute for it to just totally get through the whole system and make all the juice. So I want to show you guys this real quick. I mean, this is the strawberry pulp. You can see, you know, we didn't take off the little green top and the stems and they basically got juice and came out with a pulp. And this pulp is actually fairly dry. I mean, I can squeeze it and not much juice is coming out. This is basically all the fiber and we're left with the sweet, delicious strawberry juice. Let's go ahead and turn that off and show you guys the color. Now on some machines, you're gonna get what's called juice separation. You know, especially high speed machines are known for doing this. You're gonna see the juice separate, but not with the juice presser because it runs at such a low RPM. You're rarely gonna get any separation unless you sit this, let this sit out for a long time. So let's go ahead and set this aside there. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna juice some apples. Apple juice is one of the most favorite things to juice. I mean, I think apple juice is probably one of the most and best selling bottled and canned juices, but remember when you're buying bottled and canned juices, they have been heated and heat treated to lose all the enzymes and diminish a lot of the nutrition in the juice. Now when you juice your own fruits and vegetables, you're going to get the maximum amount of nutrition that's put in to the plant by nature. So when juicing apples, it's uber super important to pick nice, hard, firm fruit. I talked about this on the strawberries. But it's even more important on the apples. If you get an apple that's nice and mushy, this machine will turn into applesauce instead of an apple juice. So very important to get nice hard apples. Now, I can't tell you to go to the produce shop and take your thumb and press into the apple as hard as you can to see if you're going to dent it. <laughs> because if you can, that's not an apple you want to buy. But you want a nice hard firm apple that's as fresh as possible. Uh, the Granny Smith apples tend to juice the best. So if you have apples in your market that are all soft, go with the Granny Smith. They're going to actually juice better than other varieties, but always go with the hardest ones you could find. That's really an important tip. So let's go ahead and switch this out. So our pulp catch container is going to go where we catch the pulp. And we're going to put a glass under the juice uh, catch spout. You're going to go ahead and take our knife and cut up the apples into pieces. And we're just going to go ahead and drop that in the machine. 
And I know a question you might be thinking, hey John, can I juice the apple seeds? Well, yes, I personally juice the apple seeds. Some people say there are things like cyanides and whatnot in there, but you know, I think in small amounts, it's not a problem and I'm still alive so far. So go ahead and dump that in there. Now, very important when using the juice press over to let the machine work. We're gonna drop an apple in there and then we're gonna go ahead and cut another piece up so that it fits down the chute without using the pusher and let it work before adding another piece. We're gonna go ahead and cut another apple up to uh, feed it in there. Other thing that's very important when juicing apples is to remove the stem. The stem actually can actually block up the uh, ejection port, so you want to remove the stem of all the apples as well. So we're almost actually halfway up filling the cup up with literally just two apples. So I think the apples are going to create a lot more juice than a whole pound of strawberries. And this is a nice mixture of a little bit of strawberry apple juice and that's an excellent combination because we have some strawberries left in the machine. So far so good. The juice presto has done an amazing job juicing everything we've thrown at it. Alright, so here's the last piece of the apple going into the machine. And check it out, just two apples, we had a nice tall glass of apple juice. So imagine drinking some fresh apple juice in the morning instead of the stuff out of the can bottle, or even worse, the stuff out of concentrate. That stuff's the worst, man. They add sugar to it and all kinds of stuff. In this way, with the juice presser, you can make your own fresh juices and you know exactly what's going in there. Looks like we're all finished now. We can go ahead and turn that off. And here is our delicious glass of mostly apple with some strawberry residue. Look at the nice color on that. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take another glass, put it right under there, and we're gonna juice some pineapples and some oranges next. So you wanna see here on the orange, you know, this is the standard orange. What I've done is actually I've peeled off all the orange coloring off the orange to be able to juice this. Now you wanna leave a lot of the white pith on as much as possible because the white pith is where most of the nutrients are in the orange, including the bioflavonoids. Now, uh, some people might be wondering, John, can't the juicer juice the orange, you know, rind? And absolutely, it can juice it. The problem is we can't necessarily digest it. And if you do juice the rind, you're probably not going to lose your life or anything, but you probably will get bad belching and bad gas. And nobody wants to do that unless you're feeding it to your enemy. <laughs> so, <laughs> I highly encourage you guys always to at least peel your orange or just minimally cut off the orange coloring. Now, let's go ahead and turn this machine on. And we're going to start alternate feeding a piece of uh, pineapple with a piece of uh, orange here. And literally the juice presso is so efficient at squeezing all that juice out of the orange. I mean, the orange is definitely so soft. Now when you're juicing an orange in this way, in my opinion, you get what's called a true orange juice. You're literally juicing the pith and all. When you use one of those citrus reamers that you go like this and they go whoa, whoa, whoa. You're just getting an orange water because you're not, not getting all the benefits of the bioflavonoids and the white pith, which is really important. Let's go ahead and drop a couple pieces of pineapple in there. And in no time flat, we're going to be having our cup basically half full of juice. Go ahead and put another piece of pineapple. Now you really want to slow down when using this machine. Once again, I said this machine runs at 40 RPMs and it needs some time to work. The main way you're going to know how to do that is you're going to watch the outlet port here. When the pulp stops to flowing, then you can put your next piece in here. Now with a piece of pineapple, next let's go ahead and put a piece of orange. And we'll drop a couple more pieces of pineapple in there. You can see the pulp still flowing out. Now if you put in a lot of produce in the machine, the pulp is not flowing. You can look down the feed chute and it just clogged up the stuff. That's letting you know that there's a problem. You've been feeding things too quickly or you're not cutting things up well enough for the juice presso. Oh, look at that. We're just about finished filling up our glass of fresh pineapple orange juice. Looks like it's done an amazing job on the pineapple and orange. Let's go ahead and put the last couple pieces in there and let it fill out. We even got a couple pieces of pineapple left. All right, looks like we're done. Let's go ahead and turn that off and uh, switch out a new glass because next we're going to make spinach carrot juice and check this out.
pineapple orange juice. Have you ever had such a thing? Now, when you buy your own juicer, like the Juice Presso, then you and you alone get to choose the different varieties and combinations of juices. No longer are you held captive to just the juices they sell in the store. You can come up with your own mixtures. I like actually a pineapple and orange, or you could even do pineapple carrot or orange carrot. That's actually a really good one. So let's go ahead and put that guy down too. So next what we're going to do is we're going to juice leafy greens and we have a whole bag here of spinach. This happens to be about uh, nine ounces. So man, this is about a half pound worth of spinach. We're going to juice this up in the juice press though to see how it does. Let's go ahead and uh, cut this thing open here. Now the thing I want to remind you guys is that leafy green vegetables are some of the most nutrient dense foods on the planet. Now what does nutrient dense mean? Well, nutrient dense just means it's very high in nutrition and per calorie it has a lot of nutrients in it. For example, a hamburger at your favorite fast food joint is very high in calories but very low in nutrition. And we want to eat foods that are very high in nutrition to give us all the nutrients our body needs besides just the calories. Calories are important, but in my opinion, the phytochemicals, the phytonutrients and trace minerals and all the different properties in the leafy greens is what's really important because after all, think about it, where did the cow get its protein? It got it from the grass or from greens if it's free range and eating the way it should and then we eat the cow second hand when we can eat the greens by processing them through our juicer so that we'll get optimal digestion of them. Let's go ahead and open this bag up and uh, turn it on and start juicing some spinach. So we're just going to go ahead and take a handful of spinach at a time and push that in the machine. Now the spinach is nice and tender and young so you don't need to pre-cut the, uh, the fiber stock on here. But if you're putting in kale or celery or even collard greens or dandelions, then you're going to need to pre-cut the greens up into a nice, actually probably eighth inch pieces for it to work optimally. We put some uh, spinach in there, now we're just going to go ahead and put a piece of carrot in there to help get the spinach pushed through. This machine will not juice straight leafy greens all that well unless you're juicing with it something like a carrot that's really hard to help push all that green fiber through. Let's go ahead and put some more dark leafy greens, such as the spinach, in the machine. After we got two more handfuls of that, we're then going to go ahead and put some more carrot in there. You can see here, we got some green juice coming out. Actually, this looks to me like it's doing an amazing job creating very little foam and actually a lot of juice for what we're putting in. And you can hear the motor slow down as it puts more load on the machine as it's literally squeezing out the fibers of the juice. And this is a good indicator of when you should put the next thing in. When it's loaded down, don't add more produce in, but now you hear the speed of the motor speed up, that means you're ready to add more spinach into the machine. And guess what? Popeye would be proud. <laughs> we put a whole bunch of leafy greens, and we want to fall out with a carrot to help push some of those leafy greens through the machine. And you can really hear that machine slow down. You want to just let it digest that carrot and run a little while and catch up until it starts speeding up when you can start to add some more produce into the machine. So once again, this is not a fast juicer. If you want a fast juicer, you want to get one that runs at a high speed, but the high speed juicers, they're not going to juice, especially things like the spinach, all that well. So you really got to investigate and buy the juicer that's going to do the best for you. I really like this machine aside from the, uh, you know, the repetitive noise. It runs really at a slow RPM and it looks like it's doing a really great job. Go ahead and feed in the rest of the spinach. Once again, nine ounces of spinach going into this spinach juice. Now, if you're new in juicing, I don't necessarily recommend juicing only spinach and carrots. It might taste a little bit strong. You're definitely going to want to add some apple in there to add some sweetness to the juice. All right, so here's the last bit of the spinach we're going to put into the machine. It looks like it's doing a great job. And once again, Leafy greens should not be the last thing you put in the machine when you're done juicing. You want to put in something hard like a carrot that's really going to help push those leafy greens through. If you don't do this, you're going to find a lot of leafy greens stuck inside the machine that were unjuiced. So I always try to put my least valuable item, <laughs> in which case is carrots, because carrots are really inexpensive. Now if you just noticed, the machine just stopped and hey, did it blow up? Did it stop? What's going on? 
well, I think I knocked the top a little bit so that the safety switch is no longer engaged and it turned itself off. So in this case, all we need to do is rotate it back and it's gonna start up again. And this may happen to you, so be aware. If your juicer stops, that's probably why. Go ahead and put some more carrot in there and let this bad boy run. As you can see, by just adding a carrot after we put in that spinach, now the juice is really flowing. The, this juicer, once again, is not good at just juicing only straight greens. You may want to look to a horizontal single auger style machine if you want to juice like straight greens. They're going to do a much better job. This machine is really good and excels at juicing fruits. So if you want to juice fruits, this is your baby. This is also fairly good at juicing combinations like spinach and carrots or even carrots and things like parsley and kale and collard greens, but make sure you cut up some of those leafy greens into small little pieces like you would on any other vertical single otter style machine. Let's go ahead and dump the rest of this carrot in there. Now I like the vertical single otter style machines like the Koe Juice Presser because literally, as long as your produce is cut properly, you don't need to put that, push things in the machine like some other slow juices on the market. With this, you drop it in and you just let the machine do all the work while you're prepping some more carrots to be juiced. So you got another piece of carrot there, drop it in there and let it juice it right up. Then you can hear the motor slow down and start working real hard to extract all the nutrition out of the carrots so that you can get them. Once again, this machine is still working. You can see all the pulp coming out and we're going to go ahead and grab some of this carrot pulp here for you. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but this carrot pulp, man, that's really dry. You can squeeze it and barely any juice comes out of it. So this machine looks like it's doing an amazing job on the carrot spinach that we just juiced. Looks like we're pretty much done juicing. We got a last couple of drips. We're going to go ahead and turn that off. And uh, let's see, what I like to do sometimes on the juicers is uh, tip this up to see if we got any more juice and barely any more juice is coming out. So what I like to do is uh, rotate this pitcher over so don't drip on my counter. And as you can see here, got four nice, tall glasses of juice. So to recap, we juiced the straight strawberries. This is one pound of strawberries and a one nice glass of juice. Next, we juiced the apples. Apples are definitely delicious and we're still not getting any juice separation. We do have some of the foam on the top and this always happens with the apples. In addition, we got the pineapple orange juice, once again, Juice Presser did a great job. And finally, we did nine ounces of spinach and just three carrots. We made a nice tall juice. Once again, the Juice Presser did a great job on that as well. The last thing I want to share with you guys is that when you're done juicing, the most important thing besides drinking your juice is actually cleaning the juicer. Uh, you need to clean the juicer right after you use it, and it's going to make cleanup a breeze. If you let it sit and the juice particles and the pulp cake on, it literally gets five times harder to clean and it's going to take you twice as long. So right when you're done juicing, you're going to want to go ahead and disassemble the machine, which is actually very easy. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to take this special cleaning brush. You want to use the cleaning brush to clean the outside and the inside of the screen and basically get all the pulp dislodged out of all the holes in the screen. In this way, you're going to be assured that next time you use it, you're going to get the maximum yield out of your Juice Presso. I really enjoyed showing you guys the Juice Presso that is now available at Discount Juicers. Stay tuned for an upcoming episode where we'll be comparing the Juice Presso to the Omega Vert series of juicers, which are both vertical single auger style juicers. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode learning more about the Juice Presso. Once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.